Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today this is something a little different from the typical videos that I do. So um, with those videos, uh, those videos take a lot of time and effort and research to bring out and because I do only do that video from start to finish on my weekends, sometimes I'm just not able to get one out which is why I do sometimes go weeks even months without being able to upload something. Um, and that's just quite frankly because I just don't have time with on top of everything else that I'm getting up to. So I thought in the weekends that I'm not able to work on one of those videos, I would do something like this, which is sort of like a sit down video and I kind of just show off some games I've recently purchased or talk about some games that I've been playing in the month. So I've grabbed um, a bunch of games that I purchased in the month of February. And so currently it's March. So when we get into April, I will show off the games I've bought in March and vice versa. So I'm going to show off a bunch of games and a console that I purchased in the month of February. So I've got a wide variety here. I've got Nintendo Switch, we've got Xbox, Wii and Wii U. So anyway, without, getting, without rambling on too much, we'll start with my first game. So the first one we have here is a Nintendo Switch game. So this game is called Alex Kid in Miracle World. And this is a remaster of the Sega Master System game, Alex Kid in Miracle World. And so this came out on the Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, I believe. And the good thing about this game is it is a remaster, but you can actually switch to the original graphics that was on the Master System, which is pretty good. Um, this game is quite pricey though, I think on the Switch it's like, I think it's like almost full retail price, which with the length that the um, Sega Master System games are, I wouldn't say it's worth that price. So a game like this I would recommend purchasing when there's a sale. Um, uh, it comes with like a little keychain as you can see right here and a little map. Um, so when this game goes on sale, definitely worth purchasing. Um, but this was actually the first game I ever played um, on a console, uh, was Alex Kidd on a Sega Master System, original one. And you know, this came out, I originally bought it on Steam, but I kind of wanted to play it the couch experience, which is how I originally played it. So I ended up purchasing this when there was a big sale up at EB Games, which is what we have in Australia. And I think I bought it for like $30, which is probably, I'd say it was worth it. So that's the first game. And this was a new release that came out in February and this one actually wasn't purchased for me. I actually bought this for my partner for her birthday because she is a big Harry Potter game. Uh, sorry, big Harry Potter fan and that is Hogwarts Legacy. Um, I played this as well because I was pretty excited for this game as well. But um, yeah, I didn't end up finishing it. Um, the reason being, I thought this was a really good game. I think when you first play it, it looks really nice. The graphics look fantastic, there's a lot of content. My only my only problem with this game is it's a bit too casual. I was sort of hoping that the RPG mechanics would be a, a bit more deep. I was kind of hoping that you would be able to actually, when you learn a spell, you can improve and get better at using the spell. Say for example, when you first learn a charm, you're not very good at it. Sometimes you can stuff it up and maybe when you keep using it, you get better at it. You can start doing better versions of it, but it's pretty much, it's a pretty casual game, which I can understand why they've done it because, you know, a Harry Potter game, you want to kind of appeal to the mass casuals. So, but other than that, if that doesn't bother you, this is honestly, it's a really good game. There's a lot of content in this, a lot of side quests. I probably got about, 15 hours into it. Um, I think once I had walked around, seen everything, what the game had to offer, um, I kind of just fell off with this game. Um, but if you're a big Harry Potter fan and you're a casual gamer, this is definitely a fantastic game. I think you would really uh, enjoy this one. So that's the second game. Okay, so now we're coming into the Xbox 360 games and in February, I was on a bit of a Guitar Hero kick. Um, I was, you can see, as I said before, I'm purchasing a lot of games that I used to play when I was younger. Um, so that's why I'm buying a lot of Xbox 360 and Wii titles. Um, and one of those games that I played a lot when I was younger was the Guitar Hero series. And little did I know, the guitars are actually getting really pricey now. Um, just like the, uh, the World Tour guitar on eBay, I, even on like my local Ebay's, which we call Gumtree, they go for like $100 per peripheral. It's pretty insane. Um, so, 
mean, if you go maybe five years ago, you could buy these in bargain bins for like $5. But for some reason, they're just really going up in price. Um, but yeah, I was on a bit of a kick, so I ended up purchasing a lot of the games. Funny enough, the actual games themselves are actually really cheap at the moment. So I have four here that I purchased on Xbox 360. So I actually purchased Guitar Hero 2. Um, I purchased also Guitar Hero 3. Um, my favorite one, Guitar Hero World Tour. And probably my least favorite one, Guitar Hero Warriors of Rock. Um, so this one being my least favorite is because this one is more heavy rock metal music and it's not my kind of music. There are a few tracks on here I really like, but for example, some of the songs on here, you've got like Megadeth, uh, you got Ramstein, Nine Inch Nails, Linkin Park. So you got a few old stuff, but a lot of this, yeah, like I said, is heavy metal. Good game, not my favorite guitar hero. <coughs> and this one here, World Tour is my favorite. This one's got a lot of like classic rock songs and all that. Like you've got, um, what, you got, you got like Michael Jackson, you got Moose, you got the Beastie Boys, Bon Jovi, Coldplay. Fleetwood Mac, Paul McCartney, Smashing Pumpkins, the Stevie Miller Band. Um, I put a ton of hours, I remember, online for this game. So yeah, that's World Tour. And the one that I think everyone says is the best one is Guitar Hero 3. Bought this one as well. Didn't mind it. The, my issue with the Guitar Hero 2 and 3 is they used a lot of um, backup bands to actually record the songs, which I actually thought was actually guitar, which I actually thought kind of made the games weaker. I preferred it when it had the actual band playing the song. Even if it was a recording, I still think it just sounded better because all the songs just kind of sounded the same because they used, I think, a couple bands to record all the songs, which I wasn't too keen on. Um, and Guitar Hero 2 is actually probably my least favorite because for some reason with this one, the highway, it's really hard to tell the difference between the normal notes and like the hammer-ons which if you know how to use the hammer-ons, it makes the game quite easy. So anyway, those two, and I do have two of the guitars as well. One of them is actually faulty and the other one is actually also starting to die on me, which is okay because I actually got those for like $10, so they're like five bucks each. I remember I went, I drove an hour to pick it up and he had one guitar and he asked me if I wanted another one and I said, yeah, sure, which is probably lucky because yeah, like I said, one of them doesn't work. Um, so, yeah, so I saved quite a bit for that, I think. And the next ones we have here is some more Xbox 360 games. And these ones, I got really lucky with these ones. So, um, I'm trying to fill up also a couple of Xbox games. So I actually ended up buying two Elder Scrolls games. We have the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, which is backwards compatible on Series X. So I really want to come back and play this on Series X. So this game runs at 4K at 60 FPS. So it looks absolutely fantastic. If you've played this on 360 or the original Xbox, you will know that this game runs like absolute ass on it. It doesn't run good at all. It runs terrible. It's unlocked frame rate. And so the frame rate just goes up and down like crazy. So I'd recommend not playing this on the original Xbox. Play this on Series X. But yeah, fantastic game on this Series X. It's a brand new game, it's fantastic. If you haven't played on the new consoles, definitely try it out. And my favorite Elder Scrolls game is The Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. Like I said, uh, when I was younger, I sold off a lot of my collection, which kind of sucks. So I'm really trying to like collect, um, collect for those collections again. So uh, I've been on a huge Xbox 360 buying spree. Uh, and also the reason is because Xbox 360 games are super cheap at the moment. You can go to your local cash converters, which is what we have in Australia. Xbox 360 games are probably going for like $5 each, sometimes even $2. The more ex more rare games go for a little bit more. Um, for example, I bought Sonic Generations, that was 20 bucks. But the vast majority of 360 games are like $5. They're super cheap. It is a really good time to be buying Xbox 360 games. Um, I don't know if they're really going to go up anymore. I don't know why. I think Xbox 360, there's just a lot of games produced for that in mass quantities. So who knows? They could go up in price, but honestly, don't really see them getting too expensive. And also, 360 game spines look really good next to each other. The artwork goes over the spine and it looks really good when they're all sitting next to each other. But yeah, so this is also backwards compatible on Series X, so it also runs at 4K, 60 FPS. 
Um, and this also has all the DLC, so I did a playthrough of this when I bought it. Absolutely love this game. Um, definitely is starting to show its age though, but this game honestly ages really well. Um, it's just super fun. This just... The atmosphere and the charm that this game brings is just on another level. This is a game I'll always come back and play. And we're now moving into Wii territory. So I have been buying Wii U games for quite a while. And as you know, if you've watched my previous videos, a lot of my games are digital only. And I do own them in PAL, but my issue with the PAL Wii U cases is they don't look very good to me. They're all blue, even on the spines. And I just honestly prefer the North American variants. So what I've been doing recently is I have been buying the games and then printing off high-res sleeves. Um, been printing off North American high-res sleeves and replacing them. And they look honestly so much better. So the first Wii U game we have here is Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. So this game is pretty pricey on the Wii U. Uh, this, I think this goes for like $100. Um, so, but honestly, it was a Wii U game I really wanted to own physical form. So, I own this one, and then obviously I've replaced it with the North American sleeve, which on the spine, it looks really much better um, than the PAL version. So, happy to own this one. Um, recently just did a playthrough of this one as well. Uh, had a lot of fun. This was a game that I hold a lot of value to. It was the first Wii game that I owned. And, yeah. Only just recently was the first time I actually played this on Wii U, so happy to have that one. And the next Wii U game I bought was another Zelda game because they actually came together. That was Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and I'm happy with this sleeve because it has the gold cover which is awesome. Um, and the sleeves look really good, like they look honestly legit. Um, I actually am a graphic designer so I'm able to print them on the proper thick glossy paper that they actually print the games on. So they don't look cheapskate or secondhand. Um, I'm honestly trying to catch up on a lot of games, uh, a lot of backlog games. Currently playing like Monster Hunter games, which those games you need to put a lot of time into. Like I said, I just finished um, Oblivion and Twilight Princess. I re this is on my two playlist. Just honestly haven't had time to play it. Pretty keen to start playing this one. And we have one more game that I bought in the month of February, and it's a Wii game, and honestly, couldn't have come at a better time. That is Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. So, as you know, we just recently got the Metroid Prime Remaster, so you never know. This is number 3, so we didn't get a Prime 3 Remaster, we got a Prime 1 Remaster, but um, yeah, perfect timing. This game's starting to go up in price as well. I remember like back... Oh, Five years ago, you could buy this game for like $5. This game now is probably selling for about, I think I bought this for about $40. Sorry, this game was $40, but because I did buy it with the two Wii U games, he actually gave it to my, he gave it to me for like, I think $5. Because, yeah. if you can, if you, if you haggle at stores, they usually will, you know, go along with it to get a sale. So, so I'm just moving around. I'm actually sitting on the floor so my legs actually get quite sore. But yeah, Metroid Prime 3 on the Wii. Um, really good game. I do own the Prime Trilogy, but that's only in digital form. So I wanted to own this and have it on the shelf. And the last thing to show is, well, with all these Xbox 360 games and all that, you need a console to play them on. So I had to end up buying a brand new Xbox 360. Um, so I actually did own a 360 before this one, but it's unfortunately, after we moved, um, and I plugged it in, it just stopped, stopped working for some weird reason. Um, I remember I plugged it in and it would just get like a red dot and turn off. Not too sure why it was doing that. Um, it could have just been old, you never know. Um... So, yeah, I tried fixing it, tried doing everything I could to try and get it working, but it just wasn't working. I wasn't going to bother tearing it apart, because honestly, 360s are cheap. You can get them for like 20 bucks. So, I was just like, you know what, just get rid of it, buy a brand new one. And that's what I did. So, I bought this new one. Uh, but the issue with this one is, it's loud as F. Uh, this one is super loud. 
Like when you turn it on and it's like loading up games, it's literally like vibrating the floor. It's that loud. So I don't really use this one really anymore. This one's more just hanging up on my shelf, just there look pretty, so I don't know. 360 consoles to me have just sort of been very mm, unreliable in my experience. I've never honestly owned a 360 that hasn't died on me or just had problems. It's probably the most unreliable console that I've ever experienced. So yeah, anyway guys, those are all the games that I purchased in the month of February. Um, I'm probably going to do a follow-up video of games that I've actually been playing in the month of February as well because I've been playing quite a few. Um, so yeah, anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, catch you next time.